Good morning, Killer Williams, and welcome back to the KW Command 66-Day Challenge. Today is day 18. I'm coming to you live from the 20th story of the Aria Resort and Hotel as I watch the sunrise over Vegas, and I'm here for the Future Conference, and it's a, a, an amazing conference I'm super excited about. We're going to hear 100-plus technologists, agents. Um, it's just going to be a really exciting conference. So if you guys are not here, feel free to live stream. I'm showing you this here on your command when you log in to command. That's today, December 9th, and tomorrow, December 10th. You should have this banner, and you can click on this link to, go taken, to be taken to the live stream and actually watch the event live uh, here in Vegas. So for those of you that couldn't join us, check it out live. Uh, this is kind of day two or step two in our opportunity section of the 66 day challenge. And so we're gonna dive a little bit further into that. Here we are, uh, sixth icon down opportunities. And today I'm gonna teach you how to actually create an opportunity. Yesterday we kind of walked through stages and phases and checklists and a few of those other things. So today we're gonna actually dive in and create an opportunity. So to do so, we're just gonna click on this big button here on the top right, it says create opportunity. And once we do so, we'll get the uh, first page to put in all of our pertinent information. So your market center should be hard coded. If for some reason you're a multiple member market center, uh, you can choose which market center you want to run this opportunity under. Uh, if you have a team, you would select the team here. Opportunity type, be real careful here. It does default to listing. And once you create the opportunity and do any work on it, you cannot at this point come back and change this. So uh, just be careful if it's a buyer opportunity, a landlord or tenant opportunity that you change the opportunity type accordingly. Um, obviously I am the owner here, client and co-seller. Obviously this is a listing opportunity type, so it says co-seller. I can actually choose from my contacts. So if I click on the drop down box, I can start searching for contacts in my database. And this is my wife's database that we're running this on. And I actually don't have Donald Duck put into this database. So let's see if I have, there we go. I've got AA seller, that works. All right, so we're gonna put AA seller. And if I wanted to, I could choose a co-seller. So I don't think that I have any other uh, sellers in here, do I? Nope, so we'll just leave it as no co-seller here. If when you created the contact, <clears throat> excuse me, you clicked on the add relationship button, Remember we talked to that earlier and you could actually put in the husband or wife, then this would automatically default to whatever that relationship was. So if AA seller was the wife and I had a AAA seller as the husband, it would automatically show me AAA seller here. So right now this is just a one client opportunity. The opportunity name um, with the listing, obviously I'm going to have the main, the uh, name of the listing or the address, if you will, excuse me. And so I can put that in here. And if you didn't, if it was a buyer opportunity, then you would probably just put the client's full name down here. You also have the ability to put in custom tags for your opportunities. So some custom tags might be um, if you're working REOs or foreclosures, or maybe this is an expired listing and you want to track all of your expired listings. Um, you know, there's a variety of tags that you can come in here and choose if it's new construction, if this was from a referral or sphere. Um, obviously, you can kind of work through and see those tags that are already previously uh, put in for us. Or you can create your own if you want. If you just start typing, right, you can create that tag, that custom tag for an opportunity. If you have a close date, great, put it in. If you don't have a close date, you can always just project. My listings, I usually just say, let's do 60 days out just for now. If I get it closed earlier than that, hey, that's exciting. Estimated list price, I can go ahead and put that in if I know what the list price of the listing is going to be. And of course, then your commission rate. These two are important because remember yesterday we talked about potential versus probable income. This is how those numbers are figured out. Uh, when we start off the listing, we would decide which phase and which stage that we want it in. So if we're still working towards actually getting them in as a seller, we could leave it in cultivate. If we have either working towards or have set an appointment, we could put it under appointment and I could say appointment is already initially scheduled. Or if I'm a little bit behind, I've already taken the listing but didn't do the opportunity, I could come and put it into active and then choose, okay, which one of these stages do I want to assign it to. So let's go ahead and say that it's in the appointment stage um, and I have scheduled the initial appointment. All right, and then if you're on a team, you can assign this um, actual opportunity to other team members if you so choose to, if you're setting it up as a Rainmaker. Um, I'm gonna click on Create Opportunity, 
and you'll see it's gonna pull us into the actual opportunity um, tabs. So we have six of these across the top. You can see details, documents, offers, commissions, notes, and timeline. I'm just gonna work through details today. We're gonna to dive further into the other tabs in future challenges. So you can see the general information is already here. I've got the opportunity name, my team and market center, my custom tags, the owner, and then the assignee. Um, so essentially I am the rainmaker and so therefore the opportunity is mine even though Nicole is on my team She is the assignee um, Phase wise we're in the appointment phase and in the initial app stage Here's the contact name no co-seller and then you can see we have certain dates that we can put into the opportunity as well On the right hand side we can put in some information so we can further fill in the actual listing This is the opportunity date, but if I wanted to fill in the opportunity information I could do that um, let's see. There's a listing that I have right now, so I could use that as the example. 23106 Lodge Meadows Drive. I can save that, and you see it auto populates Katy, Texas 77494, Fort Bend County as the county. Uh, seller's worksheet here. If we wanted to put in uh, kind of work on a seller's net, you have that ability. So I'm going to pay the buyer's agent 3%. Um, I do have an offer, right? Well, we're working on something so closing cost I'm going to leave at zero um, if I know the payoff amount for my sellers I could put that in if it was one or a second mortgage put both of those um, if you have a tax calculator or you're working with a lender or excuse me a title company that can get you the tax information or prorated HOA dues you could put all of that information in here as well and then finally you have an ability right here to put in a description and this is Nicole's um, listing for her grandma's house. There you go, All right? So I could put that in and save that as a description, okay? So that is the initial details page. I also have a checklist that pops up, right? And this pops up because it is in the initial appointment stage. Now here's the cool thing. Yesterday, and we're gonna dive into it a little bit further tomorrow, I talked to you about creating a checklist for all opportunities. Well, now we have an ability right now to add an item to this specific opportunity. So this might be a one-off item that um, doesn't happen on all of my listings, and yet this one does. So we're on the initial appointment, and I wanna make sure that I um, bring a nice bottle of Cabernet for her parents right so this was a listing that i took that's actually my wife's parents and i could put in an actual note that said hey don't forget to bring a nice bottle of cabernet as a gift for her parents for giving you the listing um, and i could put that in as a checklist item to make sure i did that before i go on the initial appointment now this item will only show up on this opportunity the next time that i take a listing opportunity this item will not be there it's specifically hard-coded to this opportunity so it's kind of cool that you can put in checklist items that happen on all of your opportunities and then some additional checklist items that happen on specific opportunities and i can close that out you now see we have three items on our checklist over here lost opportunity this is the toggle if for any reason you want to um, remove this opportunity from your pipeline um, i would be very careful with that um, bottom line the only time I feel like I truly lose an opportunity is if I no longer have that opportunity to work with that client. So I've had clients take their house off the market and then relist it a little bit later. I don't think that's a lost opportunity. I'm still working with those clients. I have had clients get offers that fall through and then we put it back on the market. That's not necessarily a lost opportunity. That is basically just a new opportunity to rework the same opportunity. So lost opportunity, the only time I think about that is if I went on an appointment and somebody else took the listing, might be a lost opportunity. Um, if I took the listing six months later, it expired, I didn't get my job done and get the listing sold, that would be a lost opportunity as well. So just be really careful because when you click this, it does come out of your pipeline altogether um, and you no longer have the ability to see that opportunity in the pipeline. So um, that's what I've got for today, guys. Uh, tomorrow, we're gonna dive a little bit further into the checklists. We're gonna get into documents. We're gonna get into offers. We're really gonna explore a deep dive on opportunities and make sure you guys are well informed what's happening there. So um, I'm gonna go get ready for an amazing future conference and be looking for more posts and details about that here soon. And as always, I look forward to speaking with you again tomorrow morning. Thanks so much, guys.